Hi guys, welcome back today to a new video lesson. This is actually a request from one of you. So thank you very much for your suggestion. In fact, thank you for all of your suggestions. I do try and make videos about them. Sometimes it takes me a few weeks because occasionally I have a bit of a backlog with, uh, with the requests, but I will always do my best to incorporate your suggestions into the video lessons. So if you have any more requests, then you can leave them in the comment section below. I always love to, to hear from, from you guys. But yeah, today's lesson is how to talk about the stock market. And I've noticed that there are more and more of my students who are asking for this topic Maybe they're interested in investing themselves and want to be able to talk about it with um, their British friends or British colleagues. Or maybe they're just listening to conversations and they want to be a little bit more involved and to understand a little bit more about what is going on. Now, I'm definitely no expert in investing or anything like that, but these are a few terms that you hear, whether it's in the general news or if you read any kind of financial news, you might come across these standard investment terms when talking about the stock market. So if you're ready, let's take a look at some words and phrases you can use to talk about the stock market. So first thing first, I think we should define what the stock market actually is. And I've used Investopedia to find what I think is a good definition for the stock market. And so according to them, the stock market refers to the collection of markets and exchanges where regular activities of buying, selling, and issuance of shares of publicly held companies take place. The term publicly held, which we just saw in the previous slide, is actually really interesting because of course, not all companies are available for public ownership, only those which are listed on the stock exchange. Now, when a company can prove that it has the potential to become profitable, it can offer its stock for public ownership. And this process is called going public. Every so often, it becomes big news when a well-known company goes public. For example, you might remember when Facebook went public in 2012, or even Airbnb, or which went public as recently as December 2020. So that's quite interesting because most people know who Airbnb is, and they only went public in December. If you've ever paid attention to the financial news, you have probably heard the terms a bull market and a bear market, okay? Or at least the adjective forms a bullish market or a bearish market. Now, these terms, I'm going to look at the Investopedia definition for these again, actually, just to make sure I give you the correct definition. But technically, a bull market is when there is optimism in the stock market, with prices rising, going up, or at least expected to, to rise. And the commonly accepted definition of a bull market is when stock prices rise by 20% after two declines of 20% each. So this is a period of growth after a period of lack of growth, you know, when things haven't been going up for a while, things are starting to go back up again, and there is lots of excitement and optimism in the market and the investors and the stockbrokers are quite happy. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have a bear market, which is when the stock market declines, usually by about 20%. Typically, there'll be market pessimism among investors and stockbrokers. Everybody's starting to feel a little bit worried about their portfolios, okay? Because it's worth less than it was in the previous period. Okay, so those are the terms that you might hear when talking about whether the market is going up or going down. Other terms that I'm sure you'll have come across, even if you're not very interested in the stock market, because these are more day to day terms, is investment and trading or investing and trading and the difference between between the two. And this is quite interesting. So in investing or investors tend to take a long term approach to to the markets. Uh, I think most financial experts tend to recommend five years plus. So you put the money, if, if you decide that you're happy with the risk that the stock market brings, then you put the money in and then five years or more later, it should be worth more than today, um, hopefully in the future. So I think this is why investing is a common approach for things like retirement, which could probably be years, if not decades away from, from today. And then on the other hand, trading involves a more short-term strategy, a short-term approach, and they try and make the most money. They maximize their returns on a daily, a monthly, or even a quarterly basis. So obviously this is more risky because the market 
can fluctuate a lot if you look at it day to day. And that's why uh, I think day traders, they I think a huge percentage of them actually lose money at some point in their day trading career because it is incredibly risky. And so it, with that in mind, investors are more likely to ride out. Ride out means to to wait for things to improve. They ride out short term losses while traders will attempt to make transact transactions that can help them profit quickly from the fluctuating market. So it's a bit more chaotic, I guess. So that, those are the main differences between investing and trading. Another key term for talking about the stock market is a brokerage account. And a brokerage account is a type of financial account where investors can purchase stocks and other instruments to keep in their portfolio. So you can have managed brokerage accounts where maybe the investor pays somebody to manage their, their account. Also, you can have self-managed accounts, which is actually growing in popularity with the growth of things like online brokerage um, accounts as well. So one of the key instruments that you'll find in a brokerage account is stocks and shares. So the ability to buy stocks and shares is one probably one of the main reasons why people get a brokerage account. And within the brokerage account, you can usually buy some stocks in small cap companies, mid cap companies and large cap companies. And basically that stands for small capitalization or basically companies which have a low total value of, of shares. And I think generally small cap companies are considered riskier and the value is more likely to go up and down. And large cap companies, which are the big names that you find in the stock market, the growth might not be quite as, as extreme, but then the chance of losing money is, is less as well, if I, if I understand correctly how, how these different types of companies work. So you won't get such spectacular results probably, but you have a lower a lower risk there as well. So you can buy small cap, mid cap or large or big cap company stock within your brokerage account. The next instrument is an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. And it's basically a portfolio that contains a collection of stocks or other assets and it's designed to mimic or to copy another sector or another index fund. For example, you could buy an ETF that mimics and tracks the S&P 500, which is a really well-known index fund, and it should perform more or less the same as the S&P 500 does, because the stocks within the ETF will be the same as in the S&P 500. Or you might buy an ETF, a high dividend yield ETF, and that ETF will contain stocks in companies that pay high dividends. So there are a variety of types. They can also track commodities and other sectors as well. For example, and green energy. So you can get an ETF that invests in companies with green energy policies, for example. You can also find mutual funds typically as well. Now, mutual funds are quite similar to an ETF in that they contain a collection of stocks and assets. Perhaps the main difference is that ETFs trade in real time. So you the investor gets the price of the stock at that particular time, whereas mutual funds only trade one time per day. So you you get the, the price of the stock, I think, at the end of the day, although I'm not 100 percent sure at what point in the day the, the buy happens with mutual fund stocks. But that's one of the key differences. Another key difference is that mutual funds tend to be actively managed, so they tend to be a little bit more expensive. So on the one hand, you've got a professional, hopefully, <laughs> watching what's happening in the mutual fund. But on the other hand, you have to pay for that. And so that can make them more, more costly than, than ETFs. But they are quite similar. The next fund is an index fund. And technically, an index fund is a type of mutual fund because it is a collection of stocks but it only invests in the stocks of the companies within a particular index, whether that is the S&P 500 or the FTSE 100, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, whichever index it tracks. That is what an index fund is. It just tracks a particular index, as simple as that. The next instrument is a bond. Now, a bond is a type of instrument whereby the investor lends money to the bond issuer in exchange for interest payments. And those interest payments are basically the return that you get 
on your investment. And the final instrument on this list is cryptocurrency. I wasn't sure whether to include this on the list because not all brokerage accounts make this available as an instrument, but many online ones do. So I thought I would in include it. Of course, cryptocurrency is a type of digital currency. You probably know think the names like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and there are always new new names coming into, into the cryptocurrency world. So that is the, the last instrument that I think you probably would find in a typical brokerage account. So there you have some common words and phrases that you can use if you ever need to talk about the stock market, whether that be in your personal life or in a business context, or maybe you're just interested in this topic as well. Now, I just have to say, like I said at the beginning, I am not a financial expert or an investment expert. None of this is meant to be advice. It's just for fun, just to give you the, the words and the, and the information that you might need to find out more about this topic. And you can find lots of people who know a lot more about this topic here on YouTube or on other platforms as well. And you could always go and find some more information out about that. In fact, if you are interested in any kind of niche, then I would really recommend that you go and find some people speaking in the target language, as well as talking about your niche. I do that in Spanish. For example, I'm interested in cooking and baking. So I find a few Spanish YouTubers who talk a lot about that. And so not only am I learning the thing I want to learn, cooking and baking, but I'm also practicing my Spanish as well. And because I'm interested in it, I'm much more likely to keep watching it as well. So that really helps. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. Please leave any other requests down in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Thanks very much. Bye for now.